Hello everyone, my name is Mike and today I would like to talk about Mac Mini with a new Apple M1 Silicon. It's been on the market for a couple of weeks now, so you probably already know how fast it is, what are the limitations, so I will only focus on the developer's perspective. Is it any good for iOS developers? Yes it is. Should you buy one? <laughs> As always, it depends. So I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and the performance is incredible. The whole system is just super snappy and responsive. Working with the Xcode is like the best <laughs> ever. And playing with the Swift UI, you can just see like on the fly what's what's like going on. I am an iOS developer and before I bought Mac Mini, I was using MacBook Pro with Intel i5 processor, the 13 inch with 16 gigs of memory. And it, it's not slow computer, not at all but I felt like I could get a little performance boost. My idea was to buy the cheapest base model with 8 gigs of memory and buy a new one as soon as Apple will release the new Apple Silicon. 8 gigs is not ideal, not at all, but it definitely handles it better than uh, the Intel model with the 16 gigs. If you are an iOS developer working on a commercial project, you for sure should go with the 16 gigs of memory. It will be just much more effective for you. If you are a junior developer or just started to learn how to code, 8 gigs should be enough for you. But if you can afford it, 16 gigs is the way to go. Okay, so what about the performance? It is about twice as fast as my current MacBook Pro with Intel i5, Xcode 12 and basically all apps optimized for Apple Silicon works like a charm. Building dependencies from scratch is not a hassle anymore. All of the build times are vastly reduced. And also because of those efficiency cores, you can just work on your Mac and you, you basically just don't notice that you are building something. Also, the fans are not spinning like, like crazy on my MacBook. It will just be silent all the time. If you would like to get some numbers, there is this interesting github repository with quite large ios application you can check how the m1 is compared to other intel based macbooks or macs for my macbook the build time was around 300 seconds for the mac mini with the m1 it was exactly 119 seconds if you would like to compare it to your machine and just be sure if this is like worth switching you can also like download this build and check what is your score. M1 is also having this interesting graphic feature. If you are trying to switch it to a different resolution, as you can see, it is just changing it. There's like no blink anymore as on Intel it used to be. It was just one or two seconds delay. Yes, it is a great machine, but it's not flawless. It has some limitations like for example, only two USB-C ports for a desktop machine, uh, it's quite low. But remember that you have two Thunderbolts controllers, so you can just attach more <laughs> dongles and have more ports. It is a new architecture, so obviously we need more time to adopt. Uh, the developers need more time to adopt their applications. But over time, it should be better and better. Uh, from developers, there is no homebrew for ARM yet. There's a beta version, but still you need to compile all the dependencies, so no binaries yet, mostly. Not having a homebrew is not that big of a deal. I have installed all of my apps, all of the tools that I need from scratch, basically, from the source. I only have one issue with the Swift Gen. It took me like half an hour to actually compile it, but after that it works perfectly. If you still need to run an older app using the terminal, you can basically run a terminal as a Rosetta emulation, you just need to check this box and all of the apps that you will install and run will run as native Intel apps. It's not great, but if you need this fallback, it's there. The deal breaker for me were the dependencies. As for now, the cartridge is unable to basically run on the Xcode 12. There is a workaround, but unfortunately, uh, cartridge is unable to build this one FAT library with all of the OS architectures. It will not have iOS simulator inside, so no <laughs> simulator for you. It is really, really unfortunate. There is a workaround. You could still use the iOS uh, 13.7. 
if your uh, project supports this, but running the old iOS simulator, it requires like a lot of different dependencies. So as you can see, there's like a lot of Intel architecture running and having an eight gigs of memory is definitely not good. You can see like how, how hard it is swapping and it's definitely not a great. The whole system became like really, really sluggish. Yeah, it's not that slow, but it felt like it is uh, similar to my MacBook Pro. So you basically like lost all of this M1 magic when running uh, this Intel simulator on the 8 gigs of memory. Of course, all of those are just temporary software issues. Uh, for example, for the cartridge, you can still use the XCE frameworks. Also, there is no Docker yet. So when I was playing with the service site Swift, I could not use it. More important are the Bluetooth issues. As you may have heard, Mac Mini is having those. Basically, like every hour, my mouse was like getting disconnected. The keyboard was more stable, uh, but also sometimes it was disconnecting like over the day. It was like maybe once or twice, but my mouse, my magic mouse, it was just disconnecting like every hour, at least once. So this is something that you need to consider. I don't know how third party accessories works, but even the Apple magic mouse, it was still disconnecting. So there is something uh, to be fixed. I know if this is like a software issue or if this more severe hardware issue, I don't know, I cannot tell. I also tried to reset the Bluetooth module and also tried the factory reset all of the connected Apple devices, but still even doing so, it was basically acting the same way. Last but not least, when I was trying to do a factory reset, I had this big issue. I thought that uh, my Mac is basically dead, but it turns out that there's like an easy fix. But be aware that when you are trying to like do the factory reset, it may actually fail. It is just unable to install. It will fail and you will see <laughs> this lovely message. Uh, the solution for this one is quite easy. Uh, of course, if you are having your second Mac, this is easy. You just need to connect your Mac, go to the DFU mode and basically like reinstall it. So this is basically really, really simple. But if you are not having uh, a second Mac, it's a little hassle. Should you buy one? <laughs> As always, it depends. Right now, I think that this is like the cheapest Mac that is like available and also like the best performance for your money. Of course, you need keyboard, mouse and display. But if you are thinking about buying Mac mini, you probably already have those. If you are starting with iOS development or think about it, it may be the best option for you. For seasoned developers, it's not that straightforward. Uh, you may encounter some of the issues with the arm. It should get better basically like every day, but sometimes you may actually get stuck and be unable to do your job. So as a primary machine, I think that it's not there yet. As your second one, I think that it should be all right. I decided to return my Mac mini. I was so close of keeping it, but I decided to wait until Apple will release the new version of the Apple Silicon, and then I will definitely give it another try. So yeah, this is my experience with Mac mini with Apple M1 Silicon. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and see you in the next one.